Hey guys, how's it going? Today in this video, I wanna show you how to make this super cute pumpkin stepping stone. So I was at the dollar store the other day and I came across these plastic pumpkin shaped platters. I honestly don't even know what you would use this for, but I thought, you know what? If I could figure out how to make it thicker somehow, I might be able to make a really cute stepping stone to put either in a vegetable garden area or wherever I'm putting my pumpkins next year because this is something that you can hang on to from year to year use it you could use it all year round in a vegetable i think kind of setting or like a kid's garden but i did set up a fall photo booth area to take benjamin's pictures this fall and i thought that these would be so cute worked into that area if you haven't seen that video we will link it down below um, i think it turned out really cute so i did figure out how to make it thicker i played around with it for a little while i played around with the mix of concrete that i used so i'm just going to show you how i did it so let me put this away and we'll get started okay so the first step obviously is to make this thicker because a stepping stone this thin would not hold up very well you want to shoot for something that's right around at least two inches and that way you'll get a lot more time out of it without it starting to crumble so i needed to build up the sides of my form so what i'd usually do is i usually use some type of photo paper because and i've already cut this into pieces these come in just eight and a half by 11 sheets they're glossy on one side so it's kind of like a non-stick surface it's not porous so the concrete won't stick to it so basically what i did was i took some duct tape and little pieces of photo paper and just kind of bent them to the sides and taped them on so i'll do a couple of them to show you but i do have a form already made down here next to me i just used little pieces because it was easier to kind of form around the sides here so just kind of like that and then taped it on. I'll do another one. And it doesn't look very pretty for a little while, but it's really, it worked out well in the end. So there's two right there. And then you wanna make sure that you've got them like really secure to each other so that the concrete, once it gets in there, it doesn't like push it all out. So that's essentially what you do all the way around. And then when you get the whole outer part done, then you wanna go to the inside and tape the paper to the form. That way you don't have any concrete going kind of like underneath the paper and underneath the form. You want it all to be kind of one slick surface right here. I did try to do it just with duct tape, like putting um, the duct tape here and then folding it over on itself, but it wasn't strong enough and it didn't give me straight enough sides. So I, th I think the paper worked a little bit better. Let me grab the one I have done. And I have used this one as well. So you can see all the little pieces of paper all taped together here. And then on the inside, I've got my little barrier of tape. Then I take some cooking spray, just nonstick cooking spray and spray the whole inside. And that way, you know, and it being plastic, the concrete might just slip right out of it, but I didn't want to take any chances because I really wanted the definition to show up really strong. So that is it for the form. Now I need to mix up the concrete. So let me grab my supplies. All right, there are so many different concrete recipes you can find online, but I wanted this to be really smooth so that the definition and the detail of the pumpkin showed up really well. So I'm not using gravel as part of my mix at all. My sand is my aggregate, so it's a fine sand. You can use pretty much anything that's a fine sand, sand except for beach sand. So what I do is I do two quarts of sand to one quart of Portland cement, um, but I'm only gonna pour in about half the sand to begin with. So I'll pour that into this bigger bucket like that and then I pour my Portland cement in and I get that all the way down in the bucket just to eliminate as much like the dust puffing up okay now I'm gonna grab some gloves before I start adding in my water grab my water and my mixer so this part you guys you do not have to have this this is a an attachment you can buy for a power drill uh, this is just a two and a half inch mud mixer. It's under $10, really handy to have around, especially if you like to work on these types of projects. I have done a lot of this type of thing by hand though. Uh, if you're doing it by hand, make sure to add your sand first instead of your Portland cement, um, just because it mixes a lot easier. Just trust me on that. So I'm just gonna pour in a little water and what we wanna shoot for is like a batter-like consistency, kind of like a thick batter. So we'll pour in just a little bit. And then I'm gonna give it a mix. A little bit more water. Then I'm 
basically just gonna add a little bit of sand and a little bit of water kind of alternately until I get the right consistency. Ah, uh, so this is just about perfect. You can see that it's still pretty wet. Like when I pull this out, it comes off easily. Um, but it's like a thick batter. So this is a really good time to add any cement coloring in if you're wanting to color it up a little bit, which I've got this right here. So this is just a red cement color. Ideally for a pumpkin, you could find like an orange or terracotta kind of uh, coloring, but I couldn't find any. So red works pretty good, especially because the concrete's kind of gray. So it mellows out the red a little bit. And I'm gonna use just under two ounces of coloring and we'll see how it looks. You wanna be careful with it too, cause it likes to stain. So we're just gonna pour it in, really easy. This is pretty much the last step. Oh, there's still some gray in there, you guys. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of this. There. So then we just shake the form until it's nice and level. My table's a little wobbly. And that's perfect. So you might see a little bit of water settling on the surface and that's kind of what you want to have happen. So now I just let it sit for 24 hours. I don't cover it or anything. I leave it outside in a protected spot where if you know you're gonna get rain or something like that, it's protected from that. But that is pretty much it. So let me grab one that I already have done and dried and take it out of the form for you. So here's the finished one. Uh, and these are really easy to get out. I just put a hand on the bottom and they usually just pop right out. Just like that. And I just love it. So now I'm gonna go place a few that I already have done in the spot where I want them to be. So this is the spot that I set up and we've already actually been able to take a few pictures of Benjamin and his cousins. Um, and I just thought it would be so cute to have something very on theme, like on point with the theme, um, kind of leading up to this area instead of just having it be mulch. Um, so anyway, uh, I made a whole bunch of stepping stones and I only think I'm gonna be using three. So what I do, since they are kind of thick, and like you can see on this one right here, you can see where my form started and I didn't really want that to show. I just want the pumpkin part to show. So I just kind of scoot the mulch out of the way. Look at the difference between our dirt color and the mulch color. That's, that's crazy. And then I just nest it down in here to where it feels nice and secure. No, oh, too secure, too much. Hold on, like that. And then I just scoot the mulch right back around it. And isn't that so cute? I just love it. And the fact that I can save these from year to year, as well as like the straw bales, I can put those in garbage sacks and stuff like that and store them up in our barn and I can bring them all back out next year and enjoy them for years to come. Anyway, that's it for this video. Just wanted to show you how I made them. And if you guys see something like, I know that at the dollar store, they come out with these kind of things all the time, like shamrock shapes for St. Patrick's Day or hearts for Valentine's Day. And how fun it would be to have a whole bunch of different things in your garden that you could kind of swap out and I don't know, just enjoy the different seasons. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.